So usually I, I start with asking uh, people their favorite mushroom, but uh, with you, you had a special day this week and uh, I want to congratulate you on your second master's degree. Oh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Fine arts, right? Right, exactly. That's perfect. <laughs> two, two degrees is uh, quite uh, crazy, to be honest, for me. I still cannot believe this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. I remember uh, when I finished my master's degree, and I was I was happy to to be done with it. So doing oh, yeah. two, uh, a lot of respect for that. It was one after another, but yeah, like actually the second one took much more time and effort than like the first one. So I, and the I first think one was <laughs> was what about the first one was future design. Mm -hmm. uh, which was like because I had a background in design mostly mm -hmm. I've been always doing some art but it was like on the side more and I was studying industrial design back home and I wanted like some transition because I felt like I'm not really into this like it it's it was fun I was curious but it was not something that really made me satisfied so I was looking for this transition and I found this future design masters mm -hmm. obviously I didn't have a lot of <laughs> info what's going to happen but <laughs> it definitely sounded like something quite flexible and from the like the interview at the school I kind of got this impression and it really was like it was uh, something very uh, flexible and also like it gave a lot of freedom so in in the choice of topic in the choice of your design approach so like through this I kind of came to you know actually to the idea that I'm not really a designer I'm more than mm. I'm more an artist and that but there was me, yeah can you give me a little bit more uh, detail what it means because I'm not from your field I mean I love looking yeah. at art but I have no concept of what's the difference between digital mm -hmm. creation or designing and art. For me, it's both creating something, but what, like, what is the difference? I think it's very, quite easy. Like in the basic, in the basics, it's just that uh, if we talk about design, the, you do something you are solving some problem, like you have certain problem and you have to find a solution. Got it. And in the case of future design, it, it is more like a futuristic solution, speculative solution, but any design is, um, is means that you are doing something to fix some problem, right? Got it. Of course you're using your creativity, but it's the goal is to help uh, mm -hmm. someone or something to work better or, something like this and in art it, i guess it's more about freedom of expression mm -hmm. yep obviously there is custom art but um, i wouldn't say like the custom art is 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 the art it's it's more like to make living but the mm -hmm. real art is something that you do just from your soul and from your heart so yeah i guess i guess that's the main difference okay perfect now i got it yeah makes sense um <laughs> We're gonna dive into that a little later as well, um, but I want to ask you before I forget your favorite mushroom, right? Or currently your favorite mushroom? This is the hardest question ever. I know, I know. Especially if uh, if you have if you talk to people who uh, do a lot with mushrooms, that is crazy <laughs> to ask. But I mean, that's why I switched the, yeah. the question to currently. Like, is there any mushroom right now which is just Okay, uh, well, for sure, it's, I guess the first place goes to Omanita Mascaria. <laughs> <Here? Yep. laughs> it's just, it's just hard not to love this mushroom for so many reasons, of, yeah. you know, just, just this huge magic around it and so many things from any side that you look at it, there is something to, you know, to discover. Mm -hmm. And it's just being discovered more and more and explored more and more. So it, it really fascinates me. And I kind of started foraging uh, Amanita like during last years, just mm -hmm. last two years. 
and uh, I I've done like a vodka based tincture. Um, oh, nice. That, yeah, last year I still have a little bit. Like I use it for back pains and stuff. Yep. And actually, this year I I foraged a lot of amanitas and I did like uh, I dried them out. So I'm gonna microdose and I'll see how it goes. Oh wow, nice. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about that. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. Gonna, I actually tried it as well uh, with a tincture. And um, it, it really depends on the doses. What I figured is it can go into the wrong direction. I yeah. tried <laughs> a little bit too much and anxiety came up and that was, that was not fun. Um, also mm -hmm. in social settings, um, it was too much. But if you stay on a low dose, the concentration um, is heightened and uh, I, I liked it a lot. But I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. It's uh, I guess it's a little bit of practice until you find you find your right dose. Yeah. Or yeah, try it's error. individual, I guess, really. <clears throat> yeah. Judging on what I know. Yeah. Well, I I I love it if people are open minded about the Amanita because there is a lot of myth surrounding that mushroom. Mm. And um, yeah, I mean, you sent me a couple of information beforehand, so I, I kind of knew your answer already. And uh, I, I kind of also figured um, regarding your background, because you come from a culture which is also- Mycophilic. Yeah, I mean- Not, is, not Amanita mycophilic, but- <laughs> Well, but there's these- uh, you know, the, the, in From Siberia, the um, shamanic rituals concerning the Amanita, so- Yeah, but like, yeah, exactly, but I'm kind of very far from it. And actually, as a contradiction on my life, I was told, you know, not to even come close to Amanita, like my parents from really okay. early childhood told me this. So Yep, same that, here. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, said same here. Yep. That's... Yeah, and and that made it even, you know, better discovery for me because yep. you know it I changes. Agree. It it's like turned upside down now. Yeah, and and when did you when did you discover that? That is like uh, during COVID when it just really? started. Yeah, I started just. I had no idea. Yeah, so I was just listening a That's lot nice. <clears throat> uh, to one woman mm -hmm. uh, that she has a channel. Uh, Amanita Dreamer. Uh, there is Amanita Dreamer. She's American, and then there is um, Baba Masha is called yeah. it, about she's her, also yeah. huge and i was listening to her and the manitas dreamer as well and i just got more and more and more curious you know i started listening and then i couldn't stop yes that's, that's and i was beautiful. gone yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the, the that's the beauty about mushrooms i think you every time you find an, a, a new mushroom and you recognize what they're capable of doing and i mean especially with the you know also the psychedelic ones but i mean every edible mushroom is unique in, in itself. And uh, I mean, the Amanita also, for me, it was the same, almost the same feeling as I discovered that the, um, what is it called, the uh, Christmas, the- uh, Yeah, the Santa Claus, Santa uh, Claus thank theory you. and- <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, that he's not real. <laughs> and for me, it was uh, mind, mind bending. I was like, holy yeah. shit, that is, that is crazy. Um, <laughs> and it, also, <laughs> uh, the funny part is that um, the, the the interview with the Wolfgang Bauer uh, I did has um, had the, the most views. It was crazy. It just exploded at one time. Um, there is apparently some great interest around Amanita. So, oh. yeah, yeah, it's good. Seems so. Yeah, <laughs> you need to wake up a little bit about mushrooms, and I think it's a good connection to my next question. Like, what what do mushrooms in general mean to you? Again, <laughs> the hardest question ever was, there, there are so many things, but I think um, one of the things is that they keep me like kind of alive and curious mm. in a way that, you know, I stay always um, uh, curious in this mystery of, of them, you know, uh, when, when there was a COVID time, uh, which was not easy for anyone. It was also hard for me. And I think uh, 
many days I woke up just with the thought, you know, I'm going to read again, you know, about mushrooms. I'm going to continue my book. Uh, I read so much, uh, so much of new literature about mushrooms during that time. And like every day it was the, the moving force to get me up, you know, and just not to get depressed of, of not going anywhere and uh, losing all my normal life uh, habits. Uh, mm -hmm. It, it kind of saved my life That's in that beautiful. sense. Okay. Yeah. But also like all of my life, I, I just have this feeling of wanting to go to forest again, just, just to get back to myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's, it's intuitively in in any human I, I don't know i'm sure of it that all of us we know that we come from the nature yeah but since so many of us are living in the cities and so many of us are already born like in this environment which has no you know <laughs> nature maybe we kind of lose it and it's mm -hmm. hard to sometimes hard to get back to it i was you like you can feel it instantly right if you go into the woods yeah. There's something about it, yeah. You're back home, you know. Yeah. It, it's it's amazing. You're back to your roots, and this is true, because we all came from there. But yeah. you know, we built it all around us, and we kind of funnily we are forgetting it. And this is the main thing to remember. <laughs> right. So it's it's quite a contradiction, but so I guess yeah, they they bring me back to you know to this feeling of home and feeling of my roots. And then there is another thing, I don't know if that's the time to say, but anyway, I, I guess we will touch it, is my family thing going through generations. Mm -hmm. Because I have like uh, mushroom lovers, even a few generations before, yeah. like mushroom uh, amateur artists. Uh, and uh, my grandfather was uh, also like, a, obsessed with mushrooms i have like so many encyclopedias at home <laughs> <laughs> apparently actually not no no apparently it's normal but a lot of them in german and really? some of them are czech oh. yeah. <laughs> so it's like a mix of uh, languages as well so it was um, really exciting you know to discover it because i didn't like i kind of knew but i didn't like think about it this way yeah. but as older I get, the more I think about, you know, my family mm -hmm. obsession and how it might go through our DNA, you know, it's, it's amazing. It was meant to be, you just uh, didn't know. Uh, it took COVID for you to realize it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So you, um, when you were a kid, did you actually go forage with your parents or with your granddad then? Was that something you did regularly? Yeah, absolutely. Like was the best thing to do. <laughs> um, I, I remember I was told that I couldn't really um, talk properly, but I was already like in the forest oh, and nice. knowing different yeah. mushrooms, helping my parents, you know, here is this one, here is the other one. So it was like the best um, way of how my family could spend time together. I guess mm -hmm. nature was this uniting thing for us to to just do it together because we all like absolutely love it and especially autumn like we are all gone to the forest <laughs> all right yeah and so since childhood i was like kind of told how to differ mushrooms and just just how to be in the nature like it it was quite natural environment for me and it continued through the whole life it, it just never went away so i'm lucky i'm lucky to to grow up in this environment yeah i agree there is uh, it's interesting because if you uh, talk to um, mushroom experts also with you know about poisonous mushrooms um here in germany the highest grade on people who uh get poisoned are most of the from the eastern european countries <laughs> of but, course um, because they just just go into the woods like that those people apparently i mean i'm myself half russian and my, my mom's uh, from russia so um i i know the culture a little bit but uh, my family never went into the woods like i've, I've we live close to the woods i myself just as a kid was drawn to it 
but not because of my parents. But it's apparently it's in the culture, right? There's a lot of people. Okay, so besides your your family, um, at least what I looked at when I was researching you, yeah, um, in my opinion, it, it looked like mushrooms opened up uh, also a whole new world for you uh, in terms of collaborations. I mean, you sell your art worldwide, as far as I understand. Um, so right now, since COVID, like how much, how much space do mushrooms take in your regular life? It, it seems like it's pretty a lot. much <laughs> most of of my like time, except my other music uh, job. Like mm -hmm. mushrooms are all over the place, really. Because they became so like literally speaking, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, you go to the kitchen. I have all the mushrooms here. You right. go to my studio. I have all the mushrooms there. I have mushroom books. So in 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 many ways, and I I go forage more and more here because first years since I moved to Prague, it was kind of I didn't feel so much comfortable going, uh, you know, to the forests, but. I just couldn't fight it. Now I'm like going almost mm. any time I can. Like I will go early in the morning to the forest. I will explore explore some new mushroom, you know, places, and nice. I will take my magnifying glass and took some photos. It's just a way to live now. Um, yeah, and and like most of my research is focused on mushrooms. Uh, a lot of uh, inspiration comes from mushroom books, mushroom encyclopedias. <clears throat> so it's like constant, um, <clears throat> constant research, basically. Um, yeah, and then sketching and growing mushrooms as well, a little bit. Uh, I so tried. <laughs> full blown enthusiast. OK, nice. <laughs> a little well. bit crazy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and. Yeah. Um, if you if you say you you draw your inspiration from books and all that, you mean inspiration for your your art or like how 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 can I understand your inspiration? Like where where do you go with your inspiration? It's just like uh, I remember reading um, what's the name? Uh, it's Madeline Sheldrake. Yeah, <clears throat> beautiful book. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was just, it just uh, also opened a lot of stuff for me because like, mm -hmm. of course I knew that uh, mushrooms are beautiful, but then when you really read how how much, you know, they mean uh, mm -hmm. for the universe, for the planet, for for micro and macro worlds, it just changes your per perception of the world so much. Um, yeah, and I guess, you know, like this, I guess, you notice that my paintings are um, often um, focused on these uh, small things, and tiny organisms and also microscopic worlds. And I got more and more into microscopy, and mushroom microscopy, because I, the more you realize how important fungi are, the more you wanna, you know, see them closer right. and also give them proper <laughs> attention because like they're not any less meaningful than you and me sitting I, here like I would probably more, more. <laughs> yeah way more yeah definitely yeah. yeah and the way you know even even to think about how we are sitting here and you know there are spores flying in the air like yep. for sure <laughs> mm -hmm. even think about about this you know and we don't see them but we are so sure that you know how important we are here, you know, the right. big humans. But honestly, we don't see so much. Yeah. And this is, you know, our weak side. of reality. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's interesting. It's um, the um, if you, if, um, people start getting interested about mushrooms, they don't realize how important also the microscopic um, view on mushrooms is, right? Um, usually, I mean, it probably happened to you as well that friends and family send you pictures and ask you what, what kind of mushroom is that? <laughs> and you very quickly realize that you cannot judge a mushroom just by its outer appearance. You have to look very close to understand if this is 
like on more microscopic level, how do the spores look like? And so that is, um, I think, something in a, you have to use microscopes some sometime if you if you take at some serious, point but, of your yeah. mushroom <laughs> obsession. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I guess uh, that's 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 cool. And also, you I, I mean I saw um, you do workshops with that as well. So you combine your your artwork with the microscopic research you you do yourself, yeah. right? Yeah, like we we do like some theory a little bit. We learn about art and science because uh, like one of my also biggest inspiration is um, Ernest Haeckel, if you know him. No. Uh, this is the book. I don't know if you can see it. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all destroyed because I use it so much. But basically, he does this, you know, microscopic. Oh wow. But microscopic um, illustrations. But the mm -hmm. thing is that he has done it uh, like two centuries ago ish or forgive me if I'm mistaken, but at least one century and something. And he was the first uh, artist scientists, mm -hmm. basically who proclaimed that he is both an artist and a scientist and that a way to understand science is through art. Right. So he was you know, using his eye and his hand to actually understand what you know, all these scientific terms mean and uh, it's amazing like we talk about him and about uh, the other guy Humboldt your uh, your guy <laughs> yeah he's amazing and the book um, invention of nature is absolutely fabulous about yeah. his life it's and yeah. yeah and and how you know we never we we, we didn't know nature as a whole like it, mm -hmm. it's so so crazy now we we think about it as normal but it was not like this at all and you know the, he influenced Ernst Haeckel's ideas a lot and that's how you know all this scientific arts ish um, mm -hmm. things started appear and uh, we, we take a bit inspiration from there on my workshops and we look into different microscopes that I that I bring Mm -hmm. uh, I have like a USB microscope and just a normal mm -hmm. microscope. I have magnifying glasses. So you can glasses. see it on the screen? If you say USB, yeah. you mean you can see it on screen? Okay. Yeah, and we learn like how to take some photos and then mm -hmm. we try to, you know, I show a little bit of uh, examples of how I do it, like how I work with my microscopic uh, research and materials. Right. And then we try to, you know, choose a way and just play with it. But I really like try to put an accent uh, on the idea and philosophy of it, you know, on this new yeah. new perspective of mm -hmm. it, then on you know making it proper art because obviously I want I want more that more people comes to just understand the idea than you know learn how to draw. It's of course it's beautiful to know how to draw, but but when you actually understand this idea of microscopy and you know importance of tiny worlds it right. it just changes your life philosophy and and we have such an interesting you know um, conversations about mm -hmm. uh, about the work that we do like after the workshop you know it comes it comes to such different topics as even as politics and you know oh, really? because, okay. because it's, it's all connected somehow you know mm -hmm. anyway <laughs> that sounds, sounds good i also think that's one of them main things you you artists do anyways you know you give different perspective uh, we usually go through life without really looking maybe into a microscope and then you know looking at art you you get a different perspective of how someone else looks at the world and uh, especially with a microscope i think there's a whole world not visible to us which is like crazy yeah. and the different structures the patterns and all that and it's just it's it's very beautiful but you have to take some time and look at it right yeah and, it's like meditation a bit yeah yeah it makes sense and yeah the world of mushrooms is so so huge and interesting there's always something to learn at first when i got into it I, you know through the fun facts pretty much you know you get into it and you're like oh this is amazing and it doesn't really matter which mushroom you pick you just 
go into almost a black hole where you mm -hmm. you can go everywhere from there and that's uh, you always find information and it's, in my opinion it's crazy like you could uh, probably spend a couple of uh, lives to explore the whole absolutely yeah and it's interesting how we all have yet a different story and perception of mushrooms even right. though like it's common and united but then if you talk to uh, each individual each person it will be a little bit different and right. in in our own way you know i i realized it uh, when i was in art residency and i was working on this project based on people's stories about mm -hmm. mushroom mm -hmm. mushrooms and I also like in the art residency, I interviewed like people that I just met. I was just asking everyone, you know, tell me a mushroom story. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I was this uh, weird girl there, but the result was amazing. You know, how many stories I, uh, I discovered and everyone was like at the beginning, you know, I don't know, like, I don't have a mushroom story. And then, you know, Everyone, in, yeah. in a few days, people started coming to me and like, hey, I have a, a fungi story, can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It was, it was amazing. Yeah, and, and I collected, at, yeah. Do you have one at hand? Like, what, what, what's the most uh, <clears throat> iconic for you? Uh, I was also collecting from people worldwide. And uh, I think... One of the most touching was uh, a mushroom that healed the cancer mm. of uh, one of um, so a friend of the of the friend. Uh, basically, uh, it's a turkey tail mushroom story, mm -hmm. and uh, amazing. Yeah, it's it's kind of like I think the woman had, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, breast cancer, and mm. she was like her friend forced her to. Um, take uh, this mushroom every day mm -hmm. and uh, she would like drink this tincture or something and mm -hmm. it healed with time like I mean there is no scientific proof but obviously they could see that it was the only thing that changed and right. it did help uh, so I, I did like one painting devoted to this uh, story yeah and Another one I want to mention is uh, my friend from USA. He like had completely different life, his, his own life, blah, blah, blah. And then one day he goes to the forest. He so chicken of the woods and bam, like his whole life changed. Since <laughs> it's that a beautiful moment. mushroom, I get <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he just became curious and then he opened his farm, mushroom farm. Really? He changed. He changed all his life just because okay. he saw this. You know, how There's amazing is that? Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, it yeah. Is. I I get it. It's <laughs> the, the the colors it it presents when you just walk through through the woods and then everything is green and you see this bright orange thing. I mean, mm -hmm. if you have nothing to do with mushrooms. The Amanita in that one just, you know, just. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot visuals. pass yeah. by, you know, no. just. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, <clears throat> that's interesting because you also um, said that you collect them worldwide. Like, what is your perception of how people perceive mushrooms in the world? Um, is it like, do you, do you see that it's different within the cultures? Because, I mean, I, for myself, I know a little bit about the American market, you know, um, Germany, obviously, because I live here. But besides that, it's just hearsay, right? Um, mm -hmm. I, I really don't have no idea. But I mean, you sell art everywhere. And you, I mean, you also do speaking events, mm -hmm. I saw in Hawaii. So there's, you come a long ways. And uh, how, how, like, what, what do you perceive? Like, how do people different cultures yeah talk about mushrooms. uh i guess you can agree with me that usa i think the number one right now like at least in to the me, western world yeah i guess asia is a little bit far further ahead but yeah i agree yeah i mean like traditionally yeah. 
we've been there like with mushrooms, Russia and all the countries around some European countries, <clears throat> but it's very traditional. Right. Like it's very backwards, not in an offensive way, but it is backwards. <laughs> uh and in the usa thing. it's like in both ways it's it is becoming like this renaissance mushroom mm. renaissance i would call it but it's also a psychedelic renaissance as well it's much more open there and you know supported and, and it's more and, and more discussed uh, here it's it's much more you know hidden or like you know even or only discussed in certain tiny mm -hmm. circles or not not really like so much exposed um, and uh, like my customers and my my mushroom friends are like ninety percent <clears throat> based in USA oh, and man. yeah <clears throat> and like this is how it is. Uh, they they just get so excited about all the mushrooms and mm -hmm. yeah that's how it's happening but uh, like i really have this wish for the past years to um, get more you know uh, to establish more connections in europe actually with mushroom lovers right you know, to just to just form this community and that's how we actually you know started to talk to you with you right like uh, <clears throat> because I mentioned that you know it's it's great to meet more people here because i kind of feel a little bit um isolated in a way mm. even though like i uh, collaborated and did stuff for mushroom uh, mycological society here in prague mm -hmm. and uh, a few i don't know like little projects connected to mushrooms here but it was not something like it was kind of very again very backwards because uh, like yeah. you you could not really speak on, on you know any psychedelics is not a topic to discuss and very traditionally you know based nice people but kind of like here it's a quite close culture yeah. like if you are right. not czech it's kind of hard to you know be mm. uh, accepted her, yeah in yeah. a way like Okay. It it was nice, uh, but you know, I, I I even had this funny situation when I was doing uh, merchandise for uh, Czech Mycological Society, and my first you did sketches. the illustrations, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they printed them on like uh, t-shirts and stuff. Right. <laughs> and uh, my first sketches were completely like normal. It's just that the mushrooms there were from different let's say a little bit different locations so they wouldn't mm -hmm. like grow together in real life and it was considered as too psychedelic <laughs> oh really yeah it was a little bit funny so i had to redo it so i did just you know just chanterelles just morals so that it, uh, okay. it would be more you know classical and you know right. no one would ask questions so yeah. it's Again, so it's it's nice. It's nice that they talk about mushrooms. It's nice that they keep the tradition of going to the forest. Right. You know, all Czech people are in the autumn are gone to the forests. It's really cool. The other side that it's more, you know, tradition based. Right. Yeah. I guess it's very similar here in Germany. If you speak yeah. to people one on one, it's very interesting. They are open mm -hmm. and they're happy to maybe talk a little bit about it but once it goes into the open space and people oops you're gone you're still there i'm oh, no. here <laughs> yep so i said the, if you you know go into the open space and um or public space i would say uh people don't want to talk about it because the still doesn't have uh the right perception in in the general view, I guess, and um, yeah, it's terrible. But it's it's changing. Let's let's see where, like you said, America is kind of like the pioneers again, where they just you know open up the the psychedelic use as well. But uh, mushrooms in general are being perceived a little bit different. I I, I think indeed, like they're kind of given <laughs> more. Uh, you know 
spotlight a little bit more yeah. every day you can see from different people and even in Europe like because we are all now on Instagram and you know we are being exposed we watch Netflix we see fantastic fungi you know it's it's exactly. hard to to not to not see it now right and you know it's it's cool you know I, I get a lot of satisfaction when my friends are <clears throat> who are not at all interested in mushrooms, apparently they start, you know, saying, hey, I just, you know, saw this mushroom, look at it. Uh, look, 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 I just, I just watched Fantastic Fungi and, you know, I'm, I'm so, uh, you know, curious, my gosh, take me mm. with you to the forest, please. And all these, you know, things make me really feel happy, like, you know, because I feel like a little bit doing my ambassador. Um, right. Duty. <laughs> you are, especially with your art. I mean, that's something where I, or my, I, I caught, I caught my attention, and I thought that is beautiful art. And for me, you said already, it's, it's, you don't want it to be perceived as psychedelic, but for me, it, it totally is. The, the yeah. colors you use and all that, it's, it has this psychedelic touch. It doesn't like. All right, it's I get it. The the patterns are not what you see when you on on mushrooms, but still it has this it's, feeling. It's, yeah, it's a feeling you 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 create when you see it, and it's I, I love it. It's um, yeah, it's it for me at least. It, it looks psychedelic. I mean, I don't mind at all if mm -hmm. if you perceive it like this or anyone, because art is something that you know you have to interpret in your in your own way and it's completely fine like i'm even glad i guess why not it's nice uh the only thing is that like i don't like use psychedelics to see what i you know produce mm. this is the only right. thing like i use them if i use them i use them for different purposes like right i don't know you, you therapeutic, know, psych therapeutic yeah. psychological help right. and you well, know it's... philosophical questions yeah. But like, why I'm saying is because obviously, um, since my first solo exhibition, many people started asking, you know, so how often do you take psychedelics and stuff? Mm. And I'm, and at that point, I didn't even try them. Like, you know. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. It happened much later, and it happened because of curiosity, but in, in the other sense, not art-ish curiosity. Yeah, so you don't, no. you're not using mushrooms as a tool to create your art and you don't draw inspiration from the psychedelic experience, but- Kinda. Yeah, yeah okay, I got it. Yeah, I mean, it, like I said, uh, I, I guess it's the, the, the combination of colors you use that makes it maybe psychedelic, yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not? It's cool, I mean. Yeah. Totally, I love it. I mean, I love your art. Yeah, we are all, you know, we all can get to this, you know, how to say, to that um, world that you encounter when you are mm -hmm. on mushrooms, right? Right. There are different ways to get there. It's not only psychedelic mushrooms. Yep. It's, you know, I do a lot of yoga and meditation and breathing, right. so I. I may assume that, you know, at some points also through art as a meditation, I get to, you know, these other wor worlds or like levels of perception. Yeah, perception. whatever you want to call it. It's, it's hard to hard to explain to understand. It's a state of mind, too. Like you, you lose so much anxiety, usual pattern of thoughts, and there's something new coming towards you, which is indescribable. Like, try to especially also i mean whatever you see try to bring it across with your words it's un it's it's mind-boggling you can't yeah it's impossible you see so many patterns and things that create there and then you have feelings and you know you hear things and then all that you you need to translate into words <laughs> there's no fucking way it's way too limited yeah or, oh, or if yeah. you do this, it sounds very poor. Yeah, <laughs> and exactly. you know, like, yeah. oh, I saw this, very nice. But oh my, it was much stronger. Yeah. <laughs> and, was, and then the next thing is that, you know, if you talk to people who have never had an experience and are still believing that it's something terrible, um, usually 
it, it doesn't really get to them. Like you can describe things and your experience, how, how deep it is and maybe also, you know, how it changed your personality. People perceive that as something terrible um, mm-hmm. and they're stuck in their ways and it, it's hard for them to even acknowledge what you try to explain to them because it's mm-hmm. it's bad you know what i mean it's it's really really interesting i encountered that a lot of times so i just don't talk about it that openly with people i don't know but if people have experiences there's i mean immediately a deeper sense of understanding with the people right because mm-hmm. you've been through probably a similar experience than i have and um there's we don't need words to explain what's happening right yeah uh, it's 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 the eyes maybe that yeah. say more and the feelings mm-hmm. yeah totally yeah but it's uh yeah it's still a topic we cannot really especially in the in the mycology societies uh, here in germany same thing um it's funny how can you escape this well they can't i think it's the time is is uh is now. i mean but it's 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 so funny that you know all these traditional societies like Russian, Czech, I don't know, German as well, I guess. Right. You know, they they kind of they are into mushrooms, but they kind of you know just close their eyes on such a huge part of of the mushroom world. Like you cannot yeah. do this. <laughs> I think it's it's, it's funny. Uh... Yeah, it's 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 uh, in, in my opinion, at least, is how far uh, how I experienced it is the the way the people have been brought up, right? Both of us are at least experienced a way more free world, um, also expressions and feelings and all that. We are able and allowed to do that. Um, most of the people, and my experience, at least as far as I see it, are very traditional and older. And they experience a different life, right? And yeah. if it's something you are not allowed or you're not supposed to talk about, they just stay with it. They, yeah. But having an open mind to discuss, and I mean, research now is proving it. Like there's, <laughs> and mental health has never been mm-hmm. anything comparable to what mushrooms can do. And still, to close your eyes on it, that's, in my opinion, that's being stupid, right? And they, they're going to change. It's just a matter of time, in my opinion. They're going to have to catch up to reality. Otherwise, I mean, right now, in my opinion, it, it feels like they are living in a, in, a, in a world where it's very special, very unique. Only experts get into mm-hmm. it. But the topic is way too important to leave it up to them. Like, we mm-hmm. need to translate this whole thing into a more useful for the general public. So you and you and me, we talk about because we spent a lot of hours, you know, yeah. in this world. But to understand and also the experience you have to, you know, translate it from being uh, just a mushroom and now and seeing nature in a different perspective, that's beautiful and that's what mushrooms can do. We need to get the general public to that space, you know, yeah. to actually understand that hey, look, we're not here on this planet all by ourselves we are part of this whole thing we call nature and they need to change in my opinion. So time's up. <laughs> yeah. I hope it looks like it's kind of on the way, like it yeah. doesn't look so bad. And I hope we, we don't lose it as, as in previous times, you know, by just um, an not careful uh, communication of the ideas right. and because of some, you know, people that are too expressive and too you know overwhelmed with oh my gosh (laughs) i just tried the mushrooms because like the thing is that the the myth about mushrooms being uh, dangerous right right and mushrooms as a drugs 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 makes it makes the whole topic even the whole um, situation even more dangerous because the kids will want to try that is something that totally is agreed. prohibited yeah. right <clears throat> whereas if it was completely normal if it was accepted by you know certain cases uh, in uh, hospitals or uh, pharmacies and you know if it would form different perception of 
psychedelics and then you know the kids would also react differently and it would change yeah. a lot i mean that it's uh, in my opinion also if you look at the um where most of our medication is coming from or at least a big part of it is it's coming from mushrooms the general public has not really the idea of understanding how mm -hmm. science uses mushrooms um it's not always the edible mushrooms i get it but still it's it's that's where we draw a lot of our absolutely medication from so yeah. um the the medical space already knows that it's it's not such a big you know surprise for them if you talk about yeah. you know the healing powers of mushrooms um and yeah so at least i hope it's it's changing in, in a big way but as far as i can see here in germany the the perception is little by little there's more and more people are being interested in in, in it as well Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, talking about your art, maybe uh, a little bit more, um, what makes it um, for you so interesting to combine these two worlds? Because, I mean, you, it's, you didn't have to go into mushrooms, right? Um, you just have a master's degree in art, like you could, you could go wherever, but why, why is yeah. it mushrooms? Like, what, what is it? Yeah, I guess the, the ideas behind, you know, the the philosophy behind, again, coming back to books and, you know, discovering all this information. Again, if we if we come back to Madeline Sheldrake's book, I think mm -hmm. it's one of the best uh, for anyone because it gives you like a view of all the mushroom properties. Mm -hmm whether it is truffles, psychedelics, you know, uh, mycelium, uh, myco uh, remediation and all these things, like <laughs> just to laugh. This is the book and this is how many uh, things <laughs> are in yeah, it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, like, I have this. It's, it's like yeah. my table help book. Uh, so, Coming back to the paintings, yeah, I can, because I'm a painter, I have this, you know, gift and I can maybe use it to, you know, <clears throat> bring attention. And then through conversations, I start, you know, maybe saying a little bit about different mushroom properties and, you know, how, how they can change the world, how, how they have been changing the world and you know a little bit also i try to talk about the idea of this wisdom of nature that mm -hmm. we should learn from because you know we are um, unfortunately most of the time we don't remember that we came here much later and we are on this earth just for you know for a second and mushrooms trees you know all this ancient uh, plant organisms they uh, are here for you know my gosh it's uh, scary millions, to say how long millions of years yeah <clears throat> yeah and uh, obviously we learn from you know from our grandfathers and grandmothers and this is our you know <laughs> grandfathers grandmothers that are that have a lot um, to share with us and maybe you know um, give us more understanding of how to move forward as a right. humanity because we are obviously on the wrong way in many uh, situations on this earth and maybe you know if if people start a little bit more respecting them and not taking them as something alien because mm -hmm. it's indeed uh, a part of us uh, in many ways so all these ideas, I guess, I'm trying to, you know, ex explore. And so when people ask questions, I obviously, I go into this and share you know, my perspective and how I feel it and, and how the mushrooms changed my life as well. And the ideas that they bring into everyday life, you know, ideas of cooperation, for example, you know, mm -hmm. mutual help and cooperation, helping the others. By helping the others, you help yourself, right? And then by killing the nature, you kill yourself and all these things, I guess. And I'm trying now to make my paintings 
bigger. Like my mm -hmm. final work, it's uh, actually it's the um, fine art was <clears throat> these huge canvases, and that's how I'm trying to you know immerse people into this world. That's Just beautiful. To help them be part of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love it because um, your art for me, if I look at it, or you know, we, we created the postcards. Um, it's it's a great way of um, getting people started to have a look at it. Be and, curious. Um, yeah, be curious, and I I love it. It's 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 great to Thank get the conversation you. started, and yeah, it looks great. Um, it's very I it's like an eye catcher and uh, yeah it's good um, so. <laughs> looking into the future like what 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 do you in a perfect world like what what what, what do you where do you see yourself what, what do you want to do in five ten years time because you do a lot right you do music you do art yeah it's crazy sometimes uh, I cannot <laughs> understand how I do it all <laughs> but uh... I don't know, I'm never satisfied. Like I have so many, you know, goals and ideas, you know, how to improve what I'm doing. Uh, you know, I just think that maybe it's time for me to also expand a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm going to leave the mushrooms, no way. <laughs> I will not be able to do that. But maybe what I mean is to talk more about this interconnectedness and mm. uh, have paintings also of um, uh, mushrooms involved uh, with other organisms and other animals and you know just touch the topics of organisms and how they cannot be understood in isolation and uh, how it's important to you know to see the whole chain of, of what's happening in the nature uh, in the world of nature so and this is one of the, you know, like a goals to, to expand a little bit more. And then I'm constantly experimenting in my studio. So I, I will continue that because this, you never know where it, where it brings you. Like right, right now, I am doing like some weird things, but... Uh, what, my... what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, uh, I was drawing was using oil and when I mix the paints, I uh, mix different chemicals. And I don't know how, but I guess some bacteria or, or some fungi uh, went into the cups and uh, these kinds of mushroom bacterial structures grew there. Mm. So I, that's, that's to the topic of, um, of uh, experimenting, yeah. Like I, I would never think it happens, but it did. And I was looking at the structures and I thought, why don't I cut them out and, you know, try and make something, some oh, okay. painting involving these structures. So I did and and now they are like a part of the painting and I'm building the painting around them. So oh, wow. okay. stuff like that. These things are kind of unpredictable, so I cannot mm -hmm. say what uh, what I will discover in ten years. Probably more amazing things, hopefully. Uh, yeah, and and as I said, another goal is to you know get more um, uh, connections and friendships with mushroom lovers here in Europe because I feel like this is you know uh, what we should do. Right. Uh, it would help a lot uh yeah and then yeah i'm right i'm also recording the songs and this is for music uh, but i also have this uh, way of uniting music and art like i do special concerts uh, where i show my animations uh, on the screen and uh, i sing at the same time and it's it looks like most of the people, they don't even understand that it's mushrooms, but then they start asking. And that's how I also, you know, through the music, I attract more people. Then they look at the paintings on the background and they're like, what is this? And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, this is mushrooms. <laughs> and then I go with my story, you know. 
Right. So I want to develop this format as well because I think it, it really works nicely. But animations, they take obviously a lot of time. Mm. But yeah, I'm constantly like continuing to do more moving mushrooms. <laughs> so this is another direction that I, I, I would like to continue work in. Yeah. It sounds to me like you are a true ambassador. So keep keep on keep on going and keep on doing what you're doing. Um, I love it. Thank and, you. And uh, try to support you as much as I can. Um, I don't know if you mentioned it already, but everyone who purchases uh, something in my store, uh, I send out postcards and you are now part of it. So, um, Yay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it might happen that you get an art piece uh, by you and I have two other artists already uh, I work with. And um, amazing. Yeah. Artists. So, yeah, I, I mean, spreading the love and spreading, spreading the word, uh, work and also your word. Um, and um, where can people find you? Like if uh, they want to follow you or see where your whole you know, creative work is going to, <laughs> uh, where can they find you? The best place is Instagram. It's mm -hmm. Irene underline Antonis underline art. Uh, I usually like post all the stuff behind the scenes in my studio and I share like some projects that I'm working on and you know everything that is connected to my mushroom and microscopic art and my workshops as well so this is like the main place and then for the like art gallery shop I have Etsy which is www.ireneantones.art I'll, I'll link it in the description and, and uh, yeah Sorry, before I forgot, I also have YouTube channel with animations and, right. you know, related stuff. It's www.ireneantonis.com. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Sounds so. good. <laughs> um, I'll link everything in the, in the description. And um, it was amazing. I always like talking to you. Um, and It was amazing. See. I enjoyed it so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> cool. I guess see you next time then. For sure. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.